Howdy, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M, and we are less than 48 hours away from the 2021 season being right at hand. We are going deep in today talking all things Kent State versus Texas A&M, new quarterback, new system, new everything, but the same goal that was meant to be last year going to the college football playoff. And boy, does Texas A&M have their shot. We may not know everything about the NFL, but we do know that the NFL season is right around the corner and the ultimate mock season preview is up on the Locked On Podcast Network. Go through every team division, every single winner, every single conference play, starting on August 30th all the way through September 8th with a very own host from the Odyssey Network, Ross Tucker and Jason Lockenfora, breaking down all 32 teams, all season previews, and of course, picking the Super Bowl winner. Listen to the Ultimate Season Preview 2021 on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast listening systems. This runs all the way through September 8th. As always, for those of you watching right here on Tegna, make sure you're following me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson, name right down there below. I am the host of the show and I love public feedback. Anything you can do to make this a more quality sounding podcast, give me a follow, a shout out, and I will add it into the mix. Secondly, locked on at. Aggies on Spotify. If you can't do any of that, listen. Oh my God, please no. Can't do any of that, listen live every single day at lockedonpodcast.com. So let's go ahead and continue to talk about this. This is something that I know is going to be a really big deal. It's game week. One game week. That means that Texas A&M returns to Aggieland for the at full capacity since 2019. This is the first time in almost two years that Aggieland will be rocking and rolling. They will be making immediate impacts here, there, shaking, grooving. Everything that you could ever imagine for Texas A&M football is back in the driver's seat coming up on Saturday, September 4th. And let's go ahead and start previewing this. So when I look at the Kent State team, there's one thing you have to do. This is a team, it doesn't matter if you play in the non-Power 5, it doesn't matter if you play in the MAC, it doesn't matter if you play the C play. It really doesn't. If you put up 45 points per game on average, you are a good offense. You are a stable offense. You are able to move the ball, control the clock, and more importantly, put up points and score. So when I look at this Kent State team, I don't care that they are on the MAC. I do not care that they have an opportunity to be probably one of the better non-Power 5 schools because they have the right guy under center. This is an offense that knows how to score. So Texas A&M, they have to rely heavily on the defense. What this really comes down to, in my opinion, is putting pressure on Dustin Crum. Crum is one of, if not the most undervalued quarterback in the non-Power 5 groups going into 2021. When you think of non-Power 5 quarterbacks, the first name I would say you think of is probably Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. The second name you probably think of is Dylan Gabriel out of UCF. Honestly, Crum, in less games last year, strong as a season as Ritter, as Gabriel as these other teams, because if he was able to do the most with the offense. Now, you're not going to come out here and say that he's like a superstar elite player, but what I will say is, is that he does have tremendous skills of completion rating. One of the highest completion ratings last year in college football, one of the strongest arms when it came to across the middle of the field, does a really good job making plays on like that 10 to 12 range. So whenever you're watching him play, You need to stop him and make him go deep. That's where he's going to be at his worst. You got to try and get him to go deep. This is a team that's returning, I think, nine starters offensively. I think they added 12 new names like on the defense side of the football via the transfer portal. There's a lot to like about Sean Lewis's club. They are not just this Flash's team that had a bit of Flash, a little bit of this, a little bit of that last year. They did it all, and they were really talented of not just moving the ball offensively, but they also did a really good job controlling the clock. One of the better third-down teams, just like Texas A&M. Now, you got to remember with Texas A&M, on the flip side, this is a brand-new offense. This is a brand-new system. This is a brand-new team because if you're replacing four offensive linemen and your quarterback, Haynes King is coming in as QB1. We know that that's a done deal. He is going to be taking first-team reps on Saturday night but the big question is, and this is the one that I'm really, you know, kind of thinking it over and over in my head, how soon can he move the ball? What are some things that we have to look for to where we know for a fact he is going to be really feeling himself? Because at the end of the day, I know what I'm 
in the run game. I know what I'm getting with Devon A. Chan. I know what I'm getting with Anaya Smith if you want to use him back there in some plays. But you want to be able to find an offensive identity. And you don't want to just rely heavily on the run. Because then what's eventually going to happen is the Golden Flashes, the Buffaloes, the Lobos, the Bulldogs, the Crimson Tide. It doesn't really matter who. They're going to stack the box. They're going to play more of a base system because they know that the ball is going either through the A or B gap. Or if it's going passing-wise, it's going on swing routes. It's going on slants. It's going on quick outs. It's not going deep. It's staying stable right across the middle of the field. That is where you have to show you are growing. Those are the biggest things I'm going to take away from tonight. I mean, for tomorrow's game is I want to be able to see Haynes King move the ball. This is a guy who has four, five, four, four speed as a runner. This guy who can move outside the pocket and still plant his feet and trajectorize balls deep downfield. He does have a pretty good arm. I like a lot of people were talking about Haynes King and Zach Calzada and how their arms are completely different. They're really not. It's just like, is a little bit stronger, just like a little bit weaker of a runner. King is a really good runner, and his arm is just a little bit weaker. Like I, And I mean a little bit. I mean, like, if we're going on a scale, 9.9 .9 would be Calzada's, 9.7 would be King's. So it's not that much of a drop-off. And when you look at that athleticism, it's probably more like a 9.2 King and an 8.4 Calzada. So there's a little bit more of a drop-off in that sense of the word. But I look at this deal completely. I... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at everything that was that we have here, and ultimately, I view this as an opportunity for Texas A&M to make an immediate impact. But you want to be able to see it in the passing game because of again, you know what you have in the running backfield. You know what you got: you have three runner rushing attack, change of pace player in Anaya Smith, three down runner in Isaiah Spiller, home run threat, do it all weapon in uh, Devon A. Chain. So you want to be able to see what you can do in the passing attack. This is a team that is really going to rely on their weapons this year. And Jimbo Fisher is very high on them. He is very state. He believes very much that all these wide receivers can be good and back fully healthy. Jalen Preston making an impact has Jones. If he's able to play, we don't know his status for week one. I don't think he's going to play this game. I don't, but I do think that when he comes back, you can add him into the mix. Moose Muhammad, the third guy I'm very high on Demon Demas. There is a lot of talent to like, right now in Aggieland at the wide receiver position. There's just as much talent to like at the running back position. You got to be able to win at the passing game, though. It doesn't matter who you target. It doesn't matter if you're on a 12-man personnel, an 11-man personnel, a spread offense. It doesn't matter. Like, it does not matter. What, what you have to end up with is you have to have a team that's ready to be able to win at all three phases of the game offensively. Running the ball, controlling the clock, passing. Those are my three keys to always winning offensively. Have a stable run game in situational running. So you don't always have to run it 20, 30 times a game. You can run it 10 times a game, but those 10 rushes better be the strongest rushes of the season if you're gonna if you're gonna rely heavily away from the run game. Same thing passing. If you're only gonna pass, say 22 times a game, 23 times a game, totally cool. You better also have at least a 75 completion rating and a QBR of over 90. Like, like those are things that I think you have to have. The other thing, controlling the clock. I've said this time and time again, winning on third down, time and possession are two of the more undervalued traits that people do not talk about in the realm of football that you have to be able to master. You have to be able to have the likes of the time and possession in your favor. You have to be able to have third down efficiency. And that doesn't mean you always have to connect on third down. That just means that when you're connecting, you're con and they kind of intertwine together. So when you think about it, when you're controlling the clock, you are also making a big, big impact on third down because that's the only way you're able to move the ball is by controlling the clock. So let's go ahead and talk about my three players to for. This is going to be a weekly thing that we, my three players who I think are going to be the difference maker in this game. But before I do, this episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by Built Bar, where a candy bar meets a protein bar. There's nine unique flavors. So whether you're a Cherry Barcia gal, a Raspberry Kid, a peanut, a mint brownie guy, a, a, an old timer with a double chocolate, it doesn't matter. The bars are covered in 100% real chocolate and they're soft and easy to chew. Plus, if you love Built Bar and you don't know what flavor to get, you can always get the variety pack, which features all nine bars, two of each. That way you can kind of pick and choose which one you want to go with for the long-term haul. The bars are really good for you, especially if you're trying to lose, maintain weight, and they're perfect for anybody on the keto diet. They about 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 calories, 5 grams of sugar, 5 grams of net carbs. There's not a product like this out on the shelves. 
Go visit BuiltBar.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to receive a 15% welcome bonus with your very first purchase. That's LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Stop eating the salty sweets and a retreat that will meet your needs. BuiltBar.com. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Let's continue down my pathway. I know that I'm back here, so let's go ahead and get, get this going. Who are my three big stars to watch for in this game? Now, let's get this out of the way real fast. Stars and difference makers are two very different things. Because I could say DeMarvin Leal is a superstar. He is easily, in my opinion, if you, if you listen to the series and you were watching on YouTube and you were doing all that, you would know DeMarvin Leal is my number one, defense, is my number one player going into 2021. My number two player is Kenyon Green, but neither of them are actually on my list of the top three names I watch for on Saturday night. Let's go off with number three. It's Haynes. Haynes King has got to be able to show that he can pass the ball. Everything that you saw of his tape coming out of Longview, everything you saw of his film coming into College Station, everything you liked about him, you have to consider that moving forward. Those are all things that are non-negotiable. You got to be able to figure out if he can be your franchise guy. You have Zach Calzada, you have Eli Sowers, you have Connor Wingman even. And in 2022, and um, really is actually set at the quarterback for the next three to four, one four hit. If one of these guys can hit, they're going to be set. The biggest thing is you want to be set with because if he may have the most upside, because he is a dual threat player, because if he is able to play behind a weaker offensive line and he adds to that top level rushing attack, that's hopefully going to take over the SEC. So I look at that and I go, okay, as long as he is able to connect, move the ball, control the clock, fire with one receiver. That's all I'm asking for. That is all one receiver. That's all you have to do. Find that one receiver. If it's Caleb Chapman deep downfield and you're slinging it 20 yards and the kid finishes with say six catches for 250 yards, one touchdown on the day, but you're moving the ball, Dude, by all means, that's your number one. If it's Chase Lane and you're getting 14 yards per play and you're going out and he's running good, clean, crisp slant patterns or uh, comeback routes or you know, uh, you know, know, deep posts and he's getting 14 yards and dropping right there, you're still controlling the ball. That's your new number one. If it's Damon D, if it's Moose Muhammad, if it's Anaya Smith, what you want to do, find that number one. Build that for early. That way you know we can out moving forward. Okay. I'm going through my first, my second, my third. No one's open. Got to go back to my first sling it. That's your guy. Find that guy. That is what I'm really looking forward to. Now, most people would probably say coming in at number two should be the guy who is going to be that number one. I don't know who's going to be that number one this year. I really don't because of, I don't know what Haynes King's upside truly is. And no one does. And that's a good thing if you're actually Texas A&M because of, you don't know which direction you're going. Yet. You don't know which way you think that you're head. I look at this team. I look at this offense. I look at what Texas A&M could do. And every single time I'm watching them play and every single time I'm watching them on the field, any one of these could actually be it. So I'm going to go to the defensive side of the ball for my number two player. That's Leon O'Neal. I wrote a good piece about him. If you want to read it, go check it out on allaggies.com. It's called Leon O'Neal Ready to Wake Up the World. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to Leon. I think that he's a really good kid. But more importantly, Ranger. This is your guy that's going to do it all. If you're going to run a dime formation, he's playing your rover. If you're going to run a base 4-2-5 uh, where he and Damani Richardson are splitting reps, he is your free safety. He is going to be doing everything and ev everything and anything asked of him this entire season. This is a very big for him. And when you look at Dustin Crum, he can get it to that, about that, tw that 10 to 14 yard range. That's where he's really successful. Past that, you got to take it out. He's got to be your rover. You want him baiting wide receivers to come into his zone for him to be able to quickly pick that off and take it back another way for six. That is why he is on this list. More importantly, if they get dumb passes off and say you get past Andre White and Aaron Hansford and Edger and Cooper or whoever is playing linebacker, you want to be able to get that guy you have to go trust the cornerbacks before you have to go, you know, just watch him run downfield. That is your last man. That honestly could be your last man. If you're playing the run, you want to see O'Neal be coming up using that blazing speed downhill to smack the living daylights out of a player. That's another thing you want to see. O'Neal is going to be so influential on this defense because he's interchangeable. There's so many ways that you can change this defense up. 
the base for them is a 4-2-5. So they will run a six defensive back set and Keldrick Harper will come in and Antonio Johnson will stay in the nickel. You'll play more of a box role. Johnny Richardson, Leon O'Neill will be your rope. They pass in zone or anything along those lines. You have to be able to close that. Play. You have to be able to come down and make that play every single snap. That's what you have to do. So I look at this deal. I look at what Texas A&M is going to run underneath Mike Elko this year. And Leon O'Neill might be actually one of the more influential players because if he can play at the line of scrimmage, he can play your rover role if you're playing a dime defense with six defensive backs, or he can be your last man resort in coverage. And everything that you hear from this kid, he wants to represent Texas A&M. He wants to be the guy for A&M. So many people will say, oh, I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy that I, I, I think is going to have, you know, the biggest impact on the Leon O'Neill is basically the 12th man embodied into a person. I want to see him have a very successful game. I think he is going to be in for a big, big time showing. But the number one player I am watching for going into Saturday's game is actually potentially a number one target for the likes of Haynes King. It's just not a wide receiver. It's Jalen Weidemeyer. Everyone doesn't know that. Everyone's got to remember this real fast. When you look at the quarterback position, NFL college doesn't matter. Young quarterbacks who don't stand the full speed of an offense trust two pieces and anything else. The number one is the slot receiver because they're going about seven, eight yards. They're getting you enough to where you're setting yourself up to get another first down, but you're not doing too much with it. You're just trusting that the ball is going to land in their hands. And the other guy is your tight end. Because a tight end is about doing three to four yards. It's consistently moving the ball. You're able to set yourself up for a good running play, like say on second and four or second and five, or on third down, he probably is getting you to the line of scrimmage. And Jalen Weidemeyer did that a lot last year for Kellen Mond and for this offense. This is arguably the best tight end in the country. I mean, there's, there's no denying that he is top three, in my opinion. I think the only other two you could talk about maybe is Charlie Kohler from... Iowa State, and maybe the kid, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Nick Bands, I think is it, from South Carolina. Those are probably the only two that come even close into consideration with the likes of Jalen Weidemeyer for top tight end in the country. So to see him strut his stuff, I could actually see him having a career day tomorrow night. I absolutely could. I could absolutely see him having a career day in the passing game. Record-setting numbers at tight end for catching. Record-setting numbers at tight end for receiving two, three, four touchdowns if King trusts him. And that's the biggest thing. You need that stability and you need that safety net if you are a young quarterback. The safety net this year, for sure, got to be Jalen Wyatt. He was the safety net and the check down guy for Kellen Mond in 2019. He expanded his role a little bit past that safety net, more of like a downfield passer. Now you want to see him be that full-fledged guy, but also be that safety net for the next young crop of quarterback coming into College Station. He has got to be my number one player to watch for, not for anything else other than the fact of I want to see him, and more importantly, I want to see Haynes King be successful. The only way you do is if you build that rapport, it may just not come with a wide receiver. It may just come with a tight end. We're going to get to go ahead and continue with this. We're going to talk about my um, actual predictions. We're going to bet the over, bet the under, a lot of things like that. But before I do that, did you know that college football and the NFL is back in full swing? And that means betting is going to be at an all-time high. But when you do go bet, make sure you go to the one place we love and the one place we trust. That's betonline.ag. Betonline.ag gives you the best buyouts, the best bets, the best odds, and they keep you up to date on their website at betonline.ag all the way up till kickoff through the end of the game. Don't send the sidelines anymore. Go visit betonline.ag and type in the promo code locked on to receive a 100% welcome bonus with your very first deposit. Basically, your first bet's on us. And when you do that, you can always bet on more than just college football. From the NFL to MLB to UFC to boxing and so much more, make sure you stop sitting on the sidelines and get involved in the action with betonline.ag. Your online sportsbooks experts. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Betting on the SEC football season does not have to be difficult when you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast presented by your boy Q and Paramount expert Lee Sterling. Lee and your boy Q break down daily picks, those wrong team favorite picks, and Lee's lay. Follow the Locked on Bets podcast wherever you get your podcast listening system. By bet 
AG. Dot AG. These are the odds for them going into this game. Uh, the plot, the over under, I believe, is at fifty nine point five, and the uh, yeah, the betting line is at twenty eight point five in favor of Texas A and M. So when I look at this, I think of two things. If this game was played in three, or if this game was played when they're playing Prairie View A and M, if that was the game that they were playing, I probably would actually trust them. I actually probably would go, okay, you know what? I take the I take the points. I take the over. I would take the over number one, but I definitely would take the points. I would take 28 and a half, but I can't do that. I, if you are Texas A&M fans, I know that you don't probably want to hear this because of we're the greatest team of all time. You could be. You actually could be a very good team this year. I believe that you have a very good shot of making it to the college football playoffs. I believe you have a very good shot of defeating Alabama. I believe you have a very good shot of going to the SEC championship. But you have a new quarterback. You have a new offensive line. You don't have a rapport with any of these wide receivers, and you don't have anything outside of a run game that's really been established offensively. If anything, maybe you get 28 points and it's a 28 nothing shut You still got to be able to get that extra point. You got to be able to get 30. I don't see a way where you're winning by 30 points. I, I just don't. And that doesn't mean I don't think AM is going to win. I do. I 100% believe that they're going to win. 30 points is a lot. 30 points is an absolute lot. So I take actually Kent State if I were on this game. I would say that Kent State, because of familiarity on offense, because of what we've seen from them in the past offensively, they should actually be able to stay at least offensively consistent with the Aggies for the first couple quarters. And that could mean at some point they're seven nothing. They're leading 10 th- they're leading 10 three. They're keeping it close 17 14. And then I believe in the second half AM runs away with it. Because again, the defense of Texas AM is so strong, you're going to be able to see Probably this golden flash offense lose its steam, and that flash is no more. But I can't say that this offense is going to find its identity in one quarter. I can't say this offense is going to find its identity in one game. It takes time. If this was week three when they're playing New Mexico, and this is the line, I take it. Because at that point, I know King and Calzada both are setting themselves up for a really, really, really good shot if either one plays quarterback. If King is in the system at this point and he still does not know how to figure it out, I could see Jimbo Fisher actually going with Zach. I could I could see it 100%. I don't think that's going to happen. I think King is the guy for the whole season. I 100% wholeheartedly believe that. But I look at this and I go, this is the betting line. I have some concerns. I have a few concerns. And I'm not entirely sure that they're just going to go away overnight. So I would take both the under and I would take the points. And I mean, I would bet against the spread if I was a betting man from, from betonline.he. But the final score, how do I think this thing plays out? I believe Haynes King has a good game. I don't believe he has a stellar game. I, and you know what? That, that's not me short-selling him. That's me saying, I believe there is a lot to like about Haynes King. There is a lot to like about this Texas A&M team, but it's going to take time. Rome was not built in a day. This offense will be not built in a day. This offense will not be going at this level. So you have to slowly bring it back to reality to say, hey, we're good. We're going to figure this out all together. And we're going to... I believe that Texas A&M's defense steps up really big in the second half to where it may be 24 to 14 at halftime. And that's the end of the score. That's where they drop it off. I think King throws for 200 and let's just go 235 yards. 235 would be the over under. I would say 235 is right at the stagnant line. Somewhere around there, two red zone touchdowns. That's going to be the good thing. I think one goes to Jalen Weidemeyer for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and say the other one goes to Chase Lane. Chase Lane gets his first touchdown of the year. I believe that Isaiah Spiller rushes for a touchdown. And I believe Devon Achain has a big time run over 30 plus yards on the day. That gives them the solidified advantage. They win by, yeah, let's go with uh, 17 points. We'll go with, we'll go with 17 points. So if I think that Kent State's final score is 14, that means that I'm going to go Texas A&M gets the win. Uh, let's see, 30, yeah, uh, 31. So 31-14 is my final prediction. They win by 17, not by 20 and a half, but the Jimbo Fisher era underneath his new contract starts off strong. A&M walks into Colorado 1-0. and That's going to do it for the of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following me on at Mr. Cole Thompson and at Locked on Aggies. I'll be back on Monday to break down everything that you might have missed through the, through the game, the positives, the negatives, my three stars of the game, all that and much, much more. We will see you then. Happy kickoff weekend. And remember, kick them y'all.